there! Happy end of July, and welcome back to episode number seven of the Conductor's Podcast Wisdom Series, a new series full of shared life experiences and, of course, wisdom. The series is aired on the last Monday of each month, and in each episode, I'm going to pose a question to ten musicians, conductors, or business gurus. So, including myself, you will hear all the goodies from a wide variety of people. That's called the Wisdom Series. Now, without further ado, let's get started. This month's question that I'm asking my people is: What do you wish you knew before you enter this profession? I have to be honest. This is a really hard question for myself to answer because there are so many things that I wish I knew before I entered this profession, or. I think to be more accurate, there are so many things that I wish I understood better at the beginning or before my career. Networking is one example. You always heard that you have to network, you have to be friends with others, and I never really understood what it really meant for me. I was trying to copy what other people did or what other successful people, like you know, successful with quotation marks. Um, or people I thought were successful or having a rising career, while what they were doing was really not me. I was trying to force myself into someone else's path. While much much later, I realized and really understood it was not the way it should be. I still have to be myself and be very authentic, but even if I'm different, that's okay. I have to embrace my differences. And to find people that will resonate with me. But anyways, everything about this podcast and girls who conduct are what I wish that I knew before I entered the profession, or what I wish that someone had talked to me about. But to make a long story short, for today's episode, I think what I'm going to share is I wish I knew that being myself and being Acceptable—that's probably a bad word. Being industry friendly, let's put it this way, or not completely contrary to each other. At the very beginning of my career and training and studies, I felt a lot of struggle. I felt that if I wanted to be true to myself, then I wouldn't be accepted by the industry, by the profession, by the circle, by the field. While until much much later, I learned that there are many 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 different angles to everything or to your personality, so I can still keep and be true to myself, but just express myself in a way that is market friendly. So I I can still be honest, but I don't have to be bitter. Right, I can give honest opinion. I can say things true to my heart, but I don't have to hurt other people. I don't have to hurt my relationship with others or with my friends. I can still have friends. At the very beginning, I thought there is no friend, and because we are conductors, we are competing with each other. You know, like they only want one conductor. Why would you want to be friend with your enemies? <laughs> Your enemies, and I think that's also a trend back maybe ten or fifteen years ago. When you, especially like when you were at a workshop, you were competing against each other to be the favorite of the maestro, to be the favorite of the ensemble, so you can win the final concert. If you're not top three, or if you're not selected, you came for a workshop for nothing because you're not selected to conduct the final concert. It was a trend back then. I also had to say that the industry had been very different now from before. Before that, a lot of experienced conductors were willing to mentor others or even to give advice, which was unfortunate. But I'm really glad that a lot of things are changing now. But I think that's one thing that I would like to share with others. I'm still learning、um, how to be authentic to myself, but doing so in a way and present myself. In a manner that is professional, I'm not sure if I'm getting myself <laughs> conveyed, but all the guests that I asked this question had something really great to share. 
The first one is Tianli Lu. She was a Zhidame fellow with the、um, Elwe Field and now a principal guest conductor of the Stavanger Symphony in Norway. She was my guest in episode number thirty-four when she talked about well-being, mindfulness, and psychology on the podium, which is one of my favorite interviews. She recently became a mom, and this was recorded before. I think at the very end of her pregnancy, so she talks about her upcoming motherhood. Congratulations, Jitani! Anyways, but here is what she had to share with us. I wish I knew before entering the profession. I wish someone had told me that you never make it, and I think every step of your journey there are going to be challenges. And just when you think, "Oh, okay, tick, goal achieved," you're gonna face be faced with more challenges. I always thought once I got an agent and I start working professionally, I've made it. Well, that's just the beginning of the problems. And now, you know, I think, okay, once I become a music director, tick. Nope. I know plenty of music directors who have way more problems than me. So I don't think it's ever. A point where you reach, and I just wish someone had told me, you know what? Enjoy the journey. It's going to be challenging, no matter where you are. Right now is where you need to be, and you will find the place which you belong to. In time, have patience, and you will always get the challenges that you are ready for in the time that you're ready for it. So, if something doesn't go your way, you know, if you lose an audition or if something doesn't work out. You know, maybe it's not just you that's not ready. It's all the organization that's not ready for you, or the world maybe isn't ready for you. It doesn't mean you're a terrible conductor. Doesn't mean you're a terrible person. It just means right now, that's not where you are meant to be, and there's something that fits you better coming around the corner. That would have saved me a lot, a lot, a lot of worry if someone had told me that. <laughs> The next, we are hearing from two guests who are co-founder of Diversify the Stand, which is a nonprofit organization which commissions educational repertoire to diversify the stand. They are Carrie Blosser and Ashley Killam. By the way, their episode was episode number twenty when they both talked about their commissioning process for anyone wanting to chip in to help broadening the repertoire. I wish that I would have known that I could do it all, and I ended up kind of doing it all. So don't box yourself in to one area because you can literally do anything in any section of music, in any genre, conducting, composing, performing. You can do anything. So don't box yourself in. I like that answer. I was going to do that. <laughs> If you don't see what you want to do out there, then you can make it for yourself. You just got to figure out how. Coming up next is Margaret Flood, who is founder of the Frost Young Women Conductor Symposium. I wish I knew more about the negotiation of politics, just in general in life. But I, I think just having a little bit more of a sense of what I was getting into career-wise and just my direction, having an idea as to how to navigate the politics would have been really important. I think it's an even bigger part of the job than the musicianship aspect when it comes down to it. Even though we're trained more within the musicianship, I feel I'm good at it because I get along with people and I know how to read the room. But I'm also very empathic, so it's absolutely exhausting to do every single day, and that gets me into trouble sometimes because I get really, really tired. But I also value that. Personal connection and understand that that is a big, valuable component of this negotiation of politics. My next guest is Joanne Harris, who is a film composer and conductor. She joined me in episode number thirty-six when we discussed composing for film for commercials and also about mentorship to young composers. I wish that I knew that it's okay to fail, and in fact, I wish that I knew. Failing was going to make me better. I kind of thought I was supposed to show up on the podium and on the page and be perfect. It would always like kill me when I wasn't. Until I realized it's all process. 
And it's all about what's happening in the now and reacting to that and then recalibrating each time, getting better each time. I wish my younger self would have believed that failing is only going to make you better. So get out there and suck. Like do all the sucking you can because that's how you're going to find your gift in the end is like sucking and then persevering. Yeah, I wish I would have told myself that when I was like 18. The next person answering this question is my friend Lydia Yankovskaya. She is the music director of the Chicago Opera Theater. And in episode number 41, she shares her journey and conducting both operatic and symphonic engagements, how she prepares for the both and different challenges. I wish I understood that people aren't just going to know about your great work magically. I had this idea that if I work really hard and I do good work, that things will just happen. But you have to make sure that people are aware of what you're doing and that people know who you are and, and are aware of what you're creating and producing. My next guest is Dr. Kiki or Dr. Kierna Steiner. She is a decolonization specialist and also a choral conductor. In episode 17, she joined me and shared her journey of decolonization and how the journey and the process of decolonization helped her learning about herself, her body, and her voice. That our education can inform so many different areas of our lives and that we can really take that into our hands and determine how we want to utilize all of these different life experiences that we have, whether it's making music at the university or making music in a community choir or making music with a children's choir. Wherever we find our experiences and the lessons that we've cultivated for ourselves to allow ourselves to look to the future and see the limitless possibilities and see how our gifts as conductors can be utilized in so many more ways that can inspire and engage large communities and bringing people together and bringing people together with music as a central life force and how truly incredible and what a gift that is that we have as conductors. Next, we are hearing from Kristen Roach. She is an opera conductor. And in episode 12, she talked about just managing family and having a career. That was one of the best ones, too. Everyone is the best one. <laughs> I wish I knew how disciplined I would have to be in terms of taking care of myself. I've always been really disciplined about learning the music, about practicing, about research, but in terms of taking care of Kristen, what it is that it takes for me to be able to do what I do, whether that's taking care of my physical health, my mental health, my spiritual health, my financial health, my relationships. And I, I feel like I'm still learning how to do that. Coming up next is Lina gonzalez Glanadas. She is the conducting fellow of the Philadelphia Orchestra and Chicago Symphony Orchestra. She recently just stepped in for Maestro Muti when he was unfortunately ill with COVID. And she stepped in with just a few hours of notice, which I was so proud and so thrilled for her. This is a hard one. What I wish I knew, as much as you come with the best intentions, sometimes it's just doesn't work. It depends on people's, you know, preconceived perceptions and that you really have to, I mean, everybody tells you, you have, like, you have to have a thick skin, but nobody tells you that it's never enough. You have to always be trying to grow that thick skin and protect yourself more than you think you can. My last but not least guest is Alice Farham. She is an opera conductor and also founder of the Women Conductor Program. As I think now as part of, no, not as part of, but partnering with the Royal Philharmonic Society in London. In episode 26, she talks about her journey and her study with Ila Musing in Russian and how that influenced her in her mentoring to other conductors of the young generation? Well, I suppose what I really wish I had known is that I was going to succeed. 
it wasn't that I thought I wouldn't, but I sort of couldn't quite envisage. I couldn't imagine doing what I'm doing now. I couldn't quite imagine that. But maybe, I don't know, maybe I don't even think that's necessarily something that would have helped me, really. So here you go, my friend. What's your biggest takeaway? When I was organizing this answers and interviews, I always try to think how my listeners would have as an audio journey listening to the different answers. So I intentionally had Tiani's answer first and Alice Farham's answer last. Tiani said that she wished that she knew that you never made it. You would never make it. While Alice talked about that she wished she knew that she would make it. It's with such a different views from the different sides of this career, but I think it's a great summer book ending this episode because we never really make it, but we are always making it, right? Very philosophical. We are always learning. We are always challenging ourselves and we are always evolving and growing, which is the beauty of this profession. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again in this series next month. Have a good day. Bye for now.